Hello everybody! Today we are looking at Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, the long-awaited sequel to Beetle... That was close. The long-awaited sequel to... You know. Directed by Tim Burton and starring Michael Keaton, Winona Ryder, and Jenna Ortega. Since the events of the first movie, Lydia Dietz is all grown up. She got married, she had a daughter Astrid, played by Jenna Ortega, and unfortunately, her husband met a tragic end in a fishing accident, so she has been raising her daughter all on her own. Although, truth be told, she's not really spending that much time raising her daughter. Astrid spends most of her time at a boarding school, while Lydia is busy hosting her own ghost hunting talk show. Produced by her douchebag boyfriend, Rory, played by Justin Theroux. And Astrid is understandably sick of her largely absent mother, the aforementioned douchebag boyfriend, and just life in general. Following the untimely death of Lydia's father, Charles, they return to the old Winter River house for the funeral, and things start getting spooky. And thanks to a wacky turn of events, the juice is once again loose. As some of you may be aware, they started working on a Beetlejuice sequel almost immediately after the first movie, which was a huge success. And it took them about 35 years, but hey, they finally got there. And considering how much time had passed, I wasn't really sure what to expect, but I was willing to give it a chance after I saw the trailer. And I'm glad I did give it a chance, because I actually enjoyed this one quite a bit. I got quite a few laughs out of it, and I got creeped out a few times. To be fair, the movie isn't overly scary, but I don't think it's really meant to be. It's much more of a comedy. Not every joke landed. The Soul Train thing might have worked if it was just a quick gag, but they dragged it out way too long, in my opinion. And then, after dragging it out way too long, they came back to it at the end of the movie. Like, guys, what are you doing? The joke is dead. In more ways than one. The afterlife sets still look amazing. They match the look of the first movie perfectly. And while they, of course, take advantage of modern visual effects technology, they still have some practical effects from the first movie. And I, for one, am glad they kept some of the original stop motion because an updated sandworm just wouldn't look right. Like the first movie, this one does have a big musical number, this time set to MacArthur Park. It maybe went on a little longer than it needed to, but it was still pretty well done. And oddly enough, I think this movie might be the first time I've actually heard that song all the way through. I definitely know the Weird Al version better than the original, and I'm a little confused why Weird Al chose to do a parody of that song, because it's already kind of silly on its own. I do like the evolution of the Lydia character. She doesn't act exactly the same as she did in the first movie, but still feels like a grown-up version of the same person. And it tracks that her ability to see ghosts would turn into a career as a TV ghost hunter. Her codependent relationship with Rory is both hilarious and sad. Sad because Lydia deserves so much better. Rory does not deserve better. He sucks, and Thoreau plays that character so well. It's the sort of character that you just desperately want to see get punched in the face, and you're just counting the minutes until he finally gets his comeuppance. Astrid is a very sympathetic character. The poor thing is just done with everything and everyone around her, and not without reason. Life as a teenager can be frustrating on its own, even when both of your parents are present, but for Astrid, it's just cranked up to 11, and Ortega plays that part very well. She does cheer up a bit when she meets a boy in Winter River, though I hate to say too much more about that because I don't want to get into spoilers. Though I will say I was a little surprised that he wasn't in more of the movie. He was a huge part of the plot, until he just wasn't. I was also a little surprised at what they did with Astrid's father, because it seemed like the story there was leaning one way, but then they suddenly changed direction, and it felt a little jarring. Willem Dafoe has a very funny role as Wolf Jackson, a former action movie star turned afterlife detective. Because even in the afterlife, they have cops, apparently. He's playing the kind of actor that just takes himself way too seriously, and he is so funny. Monica Bellucci was probably the scariest part of the movie. She doesn't have a whole lot of dialogue, but just her presence alone is haunting. My only complaint is that I wish there was a bit more of her. It was great to see Catherine O'Hara come back as Delia. She's hilarious. It was also great to not see Jeffrey Jones come back as Charles, because fuck that guy. Although his character and likeness are still around, and it was actually kind of clever the way they included him in the movie without actually including him in the movie. I was a little disappointed that Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis didn't return, although I'm not sure how it would work if they did. Their characters are supposed to be dead, which means they can't age, and I know digital de-aging technology works, but considering the budget this movie had to work with, 
I don't think that would have looked good. I don't think we would have gotten the Michael Douglas and Ant-Man version of de-aging. More likely, it would have been the Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen in X-Men 3 version. No thank you. And of course, Michael Keaton finally gets to play the ghost with the most again. I could not be happier. I don't think he could either. He stepped right back into this role as if no time had passed at all and is clearly having the time of his life. He's still funny, he's still disgusting, and it's just so great to see this character again. The movie is certainly not perfect, and it may very well be an unnecessary sequel, but it never wears out its welcome. I had a lot of fun with it, I enjoyed seeing these characters again, and if you're a fan of the original, you should definitely check this one out. And that's all I have to say about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Till next time, take care.